All right, so now I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape to create a vintage style logo like you see here. But before we get started, you're going to have to download and install this font. It's called Lobster, and I've included a link to it in the description. It's a free font. It's a safe and secure site. I use it all the time. Just go there, download the font, open it, and install it before you open up Inkscape because if you install it while you have Inkscape running it won't show up in your font list so install that font and then open up Inkscape and once you've done that we'll get started so here's our starting page we're gonna to go to view make sure you have custom selected and then go to zoom one to one file document properties Uncheck this box, uncheck that box. None of these three boxes should be selected. Close that out. Come up here to your Align and Distribute menu. Open that up. And then come over here to this, the Edit Objects, Colors, and Gradients, and Stroke. Open that up. And then we're going to have both of these menus open on the side. And this is how I like to work with the screen set up like that. So. Let's come down here where it says align and distribute from this drop down box. Make sure you have last selected chosen here. I think by default it chooses page or something else, but you want to have last selected. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make some text. Um, I'm going to write Inkscape. You can write whatever you want if you want to use your company name or your own name or whatever. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to write Inkscape. Come over here to the text icon, click on that, and look for a lobster. You can even type in LOB. There's lobster. Apply, and X out of that. Uh, all right, now click the arrow, and let's resize it. Hold the control key, click and drag. It's important to hold the control key, because if you don't, you get a lot of uneven scaling. You get a lot of this nonsense. You don't want any of that. So hold the control key so it scales evenly. Now we're going to turn this into an object. We're going to go to Path, Object to Path. Come over here and click this button to ungroup it. Go to Path and Union. Now that is now it's an object. It's no longer text. So let's create a square. We're going to create a square over the text. Make it red like that. Um, yeah, make it red. You can change the color down here. Make it red. And come up here to this opacity slider and let's click and drag that halfway. Let's drop that in half. It doesn't have to be exactly 50%. Anywhere in the 50s, that's fine. I just like to be able to see through different layers while I'm working. It makes things a lot easier. So once you do that, go to Path, Object to Path. Now let's go up back up here to our arrow. And where it says this icon right here, lower selection to the bottom, we're going to do that. Now hold down your Shift key and click on the Inkscape text and come down here to the Align and Distribute menu. We're going to click this to align it vertical axis and then align it on the horizontal axis. And now it should be perfectly centered, okay? Now we're going to click this. Uh, we're going to go to Edit, Duplicate, and we're going to bring this down here to the lower left, kind of like that. Uh, maybe over a little. Yeah, that looks good. Just like that. Now go over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes button. Let's click that. And let's click and drag and highlight over these two corners to select those two nodes. And come up here and click this first icon that says Insert New Nodes. And that's going to give us a new little node right here in the center. Now click on that. Hold your Control key and click and drag that to the right. Just like that. It's going to give us that little effect. Now come over here. Click and drag over this corner, hold your control key, and let's click and drag that all the way over here. Now what we're going to want to do next, we're going to have to zoom in on this. So let's click the magnifying glass, and let's click and drag over this corner right here so we can get a closer look at what we're doing. We're going to go to our Bezier pen, we're going to click that, go to where it says Snap to Paths, let's select that and where it says snap to nodes let's click that so we want those both enabled let's snap the cursor on that corner click it hold down your control key 
bring it all the way up until it snaps onto the bottom of that. Click it. Still holding control, bring it all the way to the left. Click that corner and let go of your control key and let's just bring this back down to the beginning like that. And let's click that and it's going to give us that that new shape. All right? Now let's turn that blue and come up here to where it says stroke paint. Let's click that tab and let's click the X button to turn the stroke off. The stroke is that border. We're going to get rid of that. Okay? So let's go to our arrow. Let's zoom back out. Let's go to view, zoom, one to one. Now let's go to our arrow. Let's click and drag over this left corner to select those two pieces. And come over here to where it says group. Let's group that together. Now we're going to go to edit, duplicate. Come over here, flip it vertically, and then flip it horizontally. And let's bring this up over here so that the corners snap together over here. See how I did that? We want these two corners right here to snap together. You don't want it over here or over there. You want the two corners to snap together. All right. Um, okay, now let's turn the snaps off. Let's turn that off. Uncheck that. Let's uncheck that. We don't need that anymore. Let's highlight this whole thing. Click and drag this whole thing. Click ungroup. Click it twice. Edit. Duplicate. Path. Union. Now let's turn that black and come over here and drop it to the bottom. Now let's come back over here to the stroke paint tab and let's click this blue square to give it a stroke. Come over here to where it says stroke style. Let's make that 15. Hit enter. And we're going to get something like that. Make sure the stroke color is black. It should be black by default. You can play with the colors over here. Have the HSL tab selected to see what I'm seeing on my screen. So, okay, we have that 15. Now we're going to go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. All right, now let's click this, this deselect button to deselect everything. All right, now we're going to hold our shift key and we're going to go and click each one of these red pieces. So hold shift, click that red piece, click that red piece, and that red piece. Holding shift is going to allow us to select multiple pieces at one time. Once you have all three of those selected, go to path, union, and hold your shift key again and click on that black border in the background. So we want the red piece and the black piece in the background selected. Path, difference. Holding your shift key again, let's click this blue corner right here and this blue corner so we have all three of these selected. Path, union. And we should end up with something like this. Okay, so uh, now let's, let's color this thing in. Click and drag over the whole thing. Come over here to where it says opacity. Slide it up to 100. And let's turn this red. Um, go over here to like a, like a duller shade of red like this. It's better for a vintage look. Turn that red. Click off of the graphic to deselect it. And then click this red little ribbon we just created. Edit. Duplicate. Path. Break apart. Path, Union, and let's come over here and let's make this like a dull, tannish, beige, kind of like a faded out kind of color. You can come over here to the Fill tab. You can play around with the color a little bit. Make it like a, uh, it doesn't have to be exact as mine, but a dull faded color like that works. Now let's go over here to where it says lower selection one step. Click that once. Click it twice. And let's highlight the entire thing. Click and drag the entire thing. Group. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tilt it. So with it selected like this, you can see these handles here. We want to click it a second time so it brings up the rotation handles. And we want to go to the side over here, this little side handle, and just click and drag that up like that. Maybe, yeah, I think like that it looks good. So let's just leave that like that. Now we're going to create 
a background piece to go behind it. So let's click the star button and make sure you have these properties set. You want to have the star button selected, corners 30, spoke ratio 0.97, and rounded 0 0.2. And then just hold your control key and create that shape. Now the stroke is going to be turned on. So let's come over here to the stroke tab and click the X to turn that off. We don't want that. All right. Let's make that shape the same color we made our ribbon. So go back to that color, that dull shade of red, and there you go. Now let's go to the arrow key, path, object to path, and with that selected, hold your shift key and click on our little ribbon and come over here to where it says last selected, the menu, center it on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis. And let's deselect everything. Now let's click this red, this red pattern we just created, lower it by clicking that once and hold control and shift and just click and drag this to make it bigger. You want to make it about this big like this. I like to have it so that it's covering up the corners. If it's like this, I don't, I don't like how it looks with those corners sticking out. So I like to make it so it kind of just fades in there like that. Okay? And we can leave that just like that. Now let's create a circle. Go to the circle key, hold control, click and drag to create a circle. Let's turn that blue and let's come over here and drop the opacity in half. Come back up to our arrow, hold the shift key and click on that, that red shape. Center it vertically, center it horizontally, deselect everything. Now let's click on just this blue circle and let's hold control and shift and let's, let's enlarge this a little bit. Let's, we don't want it all the way up here like that. We don't want it too low like that. We want it about, about there. I'd say that's good. Edit, duplicate, and let's turn that one green just so we can see what we're doing. All right, hold down control, shift, and just scale that down. Scale that down to about there. Now hold shift and click the blue circle. So we have the green and the blue circle selected. Path, difference, just like that. Now let's lower that down by clicking that. We're going to click that once. It's going to bring that below that, that ribbon. And we're going to come over here to our opacity, bring it all the way up, and let's make that the same color that the inside of our ribbon is. We can go over here and select dropper. And just by clicking anywhere in this area, it'll make it that color. All right, so once you do that, go back up to our arrow, edit, duplicate. Uh, let's come up here to the stroke tab. Let's turn that on by clicking that blue box. Turn that on and come over here and make it white. Let's bring that all the way over here. Again, if it's not looking like this on your screen, click this HSL tab. I think by default it uses the wheel or the CMS. I forget which one, but I like to use this one right here. So select HSL, make it white. Come over to the all right, first, let's go over to the, sh the, the fill menu. Click the X button. Let's get rid of that fill. And then let's go over to the stroke style. And over here where it says dashes, we're going to select like a dotted pattern. I think that looks good for the vintage one. Uh, any one of these will work. Just It's just a matter of what you think looks best. Let's see how that looks. Um, nah, maybe a little, maybe something a little more spaced out. Something like that. Um, all right, that works. That's good. Okay, so once you do that, go over here to Path and go down to Outset. Do an outset. That's gonna make it. That's gonna put it around the edges a little more. Let's do that again. Let's do it a second time. Path, Outset. Okay, maybe one more time. Path, Outset. So now we have that dotted line border, and let's click the lower selection button. Get that below the ribbon. All right. Now, um, 
let's create another circle. Come over here to the circle key, the circle button, hold down control, click and drag. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it, so just, just turn it black. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it first. Um, turn it black, go over to stroke, turn it off, and click the arrow. Hold down your shift key and click on the, the shape. Center it on the vertical axis, center it on the horizontal axis, deselect everything. Now click this circle, hold control and shift. And let's let's uh, enlarge it to about I'd say to about there, okay. And we're gonna lower this by one step. Click that button once. It's gonna bring it below the ribbon. And we're gonna make this a brownish color, I guess, like a dull, maybe a little darker than that. Yeah, like a dull, like muddy brown kind of color. Okay. Now let's go to Edit, Duplicate. Turn that blue and come back over to the opacity level, lever end. Let's drop that down in half and hold control and shift and let's scale this down a little bit. We want it to be inside of that circle like that. All right, now let's bring this over here. Okay, and let's just go ahead and create a square. We're going to create like a line, a square kind of like that, I guess. Yeah, that looks good, just like that. Let's turn that red so we can see what we're doing. Select the arrow, hold shift, click on the circle, and come over here. Align it to the left edges, and then align it on the horizontal axis. And now deselect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click this red piece, edit, duplicate, hold shift, click the blue circle, Align on the right sides, kind of like that. Deselect everything. Now let's click. Let's click this red piece. Edit, duplicate, and holding your control key, just click and drag it around like this. We're going to create a bunch of. We're going to create a bunch of these inside of this. So while holding down the control key, just drag it along, and hit the space bar. And every time you hit the space bar, it's going to create an exact copy of that shape. So we want to get it to look like that. All right. Now let's let's get that that blue shape raised to the top. Let's get it out of the way first. You not you might not be able to click on the blue shape. Hold down the alt key and then click it. It'll click to the next layer below that. Come up here, bring it to the top. Now let's move it out of the way. Now we want to make sure we have all of these spaced out evenly. So click and drag over all of them, select them all, and go over here where it says distribute. Select make horizontal gaps between objects equal. Click that once and it's going to level everything out. Then we're going to go to path, union. Hold shift, click on the blue circle, center them up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and go to path intersection now hold shift and click our brown circle and let's go to center vertically center horizontally deselect everything now let's click on just this let's turn that white and let's drop it down one level so it goes below the ribbon and let's drop the opacity a little bit so it becomes a little more a little more faded something like that yeah I think that looks good okay now let's go back over to our little ribbon here let's click on that let's ungroup it by clicking that button deselect now click on the text go to edit duplicate turn it white and drop it down one level. Lower selection one step. Bring it below the text. Come up here to the stroke tab and let's hit the blue button to turn that on and make sure it's white. It's going to give us a little white outline around the text. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make that a little more, a little thicker and more prominent. We're going to come over here to the stroke style 
and we're gonna make this 15 so type in 15 hit enter okay maybe not 15 that's a little too big uh, let's try 9 okay that works 9 we'll use 9 and where it says join click this rounded click this round join that's gonna make all the edges smooth and rounded we don't want we don't want this jagged mess like we see over here we want it rounded and smooth like that all right um, I don't know. Nine still looks kind of thick. Maybe seven. All right, yeah, seven works. You could play around with it yourself. You could decide for yourself what you think looks best. Um, I'm just going by what I like here. Now let's go over to the arrow key. Let's select everything. Click and drag over the entire graphic, right? Group it together. Edit. Duplicate ungroup it and go to path union now let's turn that black and let's drop it to the bottom lower it to the bottom like that come over here to the stroke tab turn that on with that blue button and let's make this black like that come over to the stroke style and let's try making that nine hit nine and enter where, where, where i'm going with this is i'm going to create a white border around this but it's going to be hard to see it on a white background so we're going to make it black first and then we're going to make it white so nine looks kind of thin so let's try 12. okay that works uh join click the round join okay that looks good go to path stroke to path path break apart path union now let's go ahead and make that white okay now we're gonna put this on a background we're gonna create a square create a box going over this whole thing like that and bring the opacity all the way up go over to stroke hit the X to turn that off and let's go down here and pick um, let's pick like a dull shade of blue almost like a grayish color yeah, something like that. Now click the arrow and lower this to the bottom. Okay. And let's uh, let's click and drag. Let's over this whole thing, group it together. Shift, click the blue square, and we'll center it up. And there you have it. There you have um, a very simple vintage style logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for watching.